day I can come out here and see this wonderful river. I can remember all that went into it. And it's so beautiful, it, um, it, uh, it rings my bell every day. Here we have this incredible beauty, as beautiful as anything I've ever seen in my travels, right here in our backyard. I came to the conclusion that we aren't owners, we're stewards. And we have a responsibility to God on how we conduct ourselves with nature. All of the 40 species of mussels that were originally in the St. Croix watershed are still present. That's pretty unusual for any river system today. Today, all we have to do is go and turn on a faucet and uh, gather our water. And so it's become this automated thing that we rarely think about. But when I was growing up and we had to haul our water every day, you have a relationship with that water. to anybody who was familiar with the river and its location uh, that, uh, uh, and that close to a major metropolitan area that was continually growing that if something wasn't done to protect the integrity of that, the shoreline of that river and the use of that river that pretty soon it would be a uh, floating uh, Coney Island. The upper reaches of both the St. Croix and its main tributary, the Namakagan, are canoe and kayak country. They are narrow, rugged and wild, lonely and beautiful, winding, white-watered, and bone-chilling as they rush headlong over volcanic boulders. It's a very intimate river that people have family connections going back generations after generations that have come here to enjoy the cool waters, the cool summers, the forested landscape that has come back, the terrific fishing, just playing in the river. That's the thing I like most when I'm out, is watching children and adults play in this river. I stand in the middle of the river, afternoon warm on my arms, my face dried tight. Upstream, my mother jumps up from the water, shakes loose a spray of glitter, and plucks at the skirt stuck to her legs. Below me, my daughter bubbles and chugs, a tugboat, or maybe a blonde water bug. Between, I am on solid sand, numb to my thighs, my eyes snagged by water cupped over boulders, and weeds spread out behind like tiny fingered hands. I cannot feel them brush against my flesh, my knees, my calves, my feet have left, gone back to the chill flow around them. I think I fell in love with the river when I started painting it. Painting the river, standing on the river, has been a great source of inspiration for me since before I can remember. We, we made an agreement, the river and I, <laughs> that we would, we would have a mutual respect for one another. Craig Blacklock is a nationally renowned nature photographer who devoted two years of his life to capturing the beauty of the St. Croix for a book he published for the 50th anniversary of the creation of the, of the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. It's certainly a, a beautiful experience in being in this kind of place and for me traveling as a solo kayaker, canoeist, uh, the silence that comes with this is really a major part of it. So incredible to have this resource so close to the Twin Cities, major metropolitan areas within half a day's drive, you can be on the water, and if you're not traveling on a weekend, you can have this totally to yourself.
Water is the Earth's architect, perpetually at work designing and redesigning its features. When the massive glaciers of the Northern Hemisphere began melting between 10,000 and 12,000 years ago, water began sculpting our region. It scouted large amounts of sandstone and limestone deposited during earlier geologic eras, creating the vast river valley we see today. So much was swept away that the underlying bedrock was exposed. That water slowly eroded massive basalt formations near Taylor's Falls, creating the Dalles. The power of moving water was also evident in the giant potholes at Interstate Park formed when large boulders were caught in giant eddies in the glacial river and drilled downward to form deep holes. At the southernmost point in the park, we see Lake St. Croix, which was the result of a natural dam formed when the flow of the St. Croix slowed as it joined the Mississippi River at present day Prescott, Wisconsin. Logging on the St. Croix started shortly after the Treaty of 1837 was signed. So by 1839, we have um, active mills. I think the first sawmill was up here in St. Croix Falls and the first logs were cut down in Marine on St. Croix. So by the late 1830s, logging had started here on the St. Croix. And it's interesting reading about some of the explanations of how vast the resources were perceived to be that this was an endless supply that would never run out and it took a very short time in reality to completely uh, cut all the, the, the white pines down. Uh, among most tribal people um, we try to think ahead at least seven generations and so when we're planning something there's a, a lot of deliberation about uh, how that's going to affect future generations. Make your choice because I don't see that that battle between economics and uh, the uh, environment are, is going to change. Whoever says the economics are the only thing that's important, you haven't seen with the right appreciation of sunrise and the sunset. When a river is used for a log drive, the river itself changes. So the logging companies built a lot of structures within the river, wing dams, um, revetments, um, different types of bank stabilization efforts so that more and more logs could be moved downstream. Um, the sediment, the erosion that happens and ends up in the river the change in habitat because uh, large trees can't fall into the river like they naturally would and create habitat for aquatic species. When I think of on our farm, those wide planks, the a pine, so all, all of that's in our history of amazing change that has occurred because we weren't environmentalists, we were settlers and developers. There are many threats to this national park. Population growth and suburban sprawl are putting pressure on the water quality of this river. Recent court cases have weakened the ability of the National Park Service and the Wisconsin and Minnesota Departments of Natural Resources to protect this river and its watershed. And we've got the broader questions of, you know, global warming. This is, this is not a minor issue, this is an existential issue. We, we need to deal with it in order to tell our kids that they can live a long and decent life. We have about 10 different species of invaders that are really an issue within the watershed. The Asian carp have arrived. We have zebra mussels known to be in the watershed. Some of the things that we have done and that have been a success is to contain where they are in the river by having the no-go zone at the high bridge. People can do a lot to protect this river away from invasive species and, and everybody needs to help. We won't, we won't lose through some big dramatic destruction of the river, but we could lose through what I call Nixon cuts. I want a little bit here, oh I want a little bit. And before you know it, if we're not careful, the river as we know it will be gone. 
all of the water that we have now is all of the water that we're ever going to have. I, I think that the St. Croix and the Namakagan, they really offer a story about how people can commit to allowing nature to bounce back. And there are a lot of animals and birds that are coming back now here that weren't here when I was a kid. Gray wolves, fisher, otter, beaver, uh, great egrets, eagles that were nearly wiped out with DDT. There's a whole host of animals that we made nearly extinct that have come back and are flourishing. Giving children the opportunity to experience nature, critical uh, part of their development and their well-being. Um, we have less and less opportunities for that as we become a more urbanized society. Now that I am carrying my first child, I would love for him to experience the St. Croix River, for him to be able to paddle, fish, hike, and have that wonderful memories for him to carry forever. And I would love to experience that with him, with his children, my grandchildren, and for generations to come. And when we reconnect with the water, and we connect with um, our love for um, the rivers and the streams and the oceans and the lakes, then we will protect the water because we protect what we love. Dirty weather ahead, sir. Wind backing into the southwest. Never mind the weather. The ultimate test of man's conscience may be his willingness to sacrifice something today for future generations whose words of thanks will not be heard. Gaylord Nelson.